Johnson, who will be ordained today to the ministry of word and sacrament, as well as installed as pastor of Redeemer Lutheran here in Williamsport, as well as for our Synod Assembly, which takes place next weekend at Susquehanna University. We, of course, extend our congratulations to our graduates, an invitation to please join us following worship today as we celebrate their accomplishments in our gathering for refreshments, which will include Sundays on Sunday, an incentive to, to truly look forward to. I am pleased to share with you that the Aguirre family will soon have another addition. I uh, received word that my daughter and her husband are expecting once again, and so I wanted to share that good news with you. I believe there is another announcement to share. Good morning. I want to thank everyone who remembered Serial Sunday. There is a bounty amount there. If you didn't have an opportunity to participate today, July 9th is our next Serial Sunday. So just log that in. The big news is, is we have three Sundays until our 4th of July celebration. And so the sign-up sheet is in the narthex, if you can help that evening. And we were also seeking uh, lots of different donations, uh, little treats and such. Check the lion for those details. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other announcements to share with one another? If not, I would then please ask that you stand as you are able that we might begin with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name.
a reading from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promised may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom you believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To know Christ and to make Christ known. The mission statement for St. Mark's, and as such, the mission statement for all of us. As our mission statement, it is certainly familiar to us. But just what is it saying? What does it mean? To know Christ. We are drawn to Him by the Holy Spirit. We learn of Him. We learn about Him. We are taught by Him. We read of Him in Scripture. We were grafted into Him through baptism. We are nourished by Him in Holy Communion. We come to Him in prayer. We meditate and think of His presence with us. We go to Him for protection. We lean on Him when we are weak. We seek His forgiveness when we sin. We rejoice in the eternal life that He brings. To make Christ known. To tell Him. To show that He is real. To proclaim His love for us and for others. The good news that God is love. God is acceptance. God is forgiveness. God is life eternal. To reach out unto others in His name. To apply His grace to life. To live life guided and governed by Scripture, our baptism, and Holy Communion. To pray for others. To minister in His name. What does it mean to know Christ and to make Christ known? It means to take Christ seriously, to be in relationship with Him as Savior and Lord. It means to learn of His ways and to go and to do likewise, to follow Him, to acknowledge His call, to be His disciple. Our Gospel for today proclaims to us these same truths. Jesus walks along, sees a tax collector, Matthew, a man who was living a way of life that practices oppression of his own people. Remember, tax collectors in the first century aided Rome. They were looked upon as traitors. Jesus calls to this man who is named Matthew, a name meaning gift of God and says to him, follow me. Matthew gets up and follows. Matthew encountered Jesus. Matthew heard the call of the Holy Spirit. Matthew left his former life behind and went with Jesus. Jesus is invited to a dinner, presumably a public dinner given by Pharisees, the clergy of his day. And he's criticized for sitting and eating with sinners. Jesus answers the criticism with an interpretation of Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, our first reading today. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The original quote from Hosea is steadfast love. Jesus uses mercy. There's a reason for that. In Scripture, mercy and steadfast love are what we might call cousins of one another. They imply that as we are to show steadfast love to God, so we are to use the steadfast love to show mercy to others. Love of God is to lead to love of neighbor. While teaching this, a leader of the synagogue approaches Jesus and asks him to come and touch his daughter, who has died, to literally raise her to life. Jesus agrees. On the way, a woman suffering from hemorrhaging touches his cloak and is made well. Jesus turns toward her and says, Your faith has made you well. He then continues on to the leader's house. 
When he arrives, he sees the mourners. That's what the commotion is referred to. Public mourners, people who actually were professionals and were paid to mourn the dead in the first century. He sees the mourners and he declares that the leader's daughter will be raised to life. She is only sleeping. Taking the girl by the hand, she gets up. Encounters with Jesus announcing forgiveness, healing, and resurrection. New life and living a new way of life. All three of these stories, actually four, depending on how you count them, proclaim to us that in Jesus there is grace, there is healing, there is new life. Jesus makes these known. And they are made known to us in Jesus. In other words, to know Christ and to make Christ known. Jesus calls us to embrace grace, to embrace healing and new life. This is the good news that Jesus proclaims. This is the good news we are to proclaim in Jesus' name. Jesus calls us, not for our own sake, our own reputation, or our own safety, not for our own glory, not for the sake of our own nation, community, world, or family. Jesus calls us for the kingdom of God. To proclaim God's love for us and for all people. To embrace the glory of God. The telling of God's love, of showing God's love. To serve and create more opportunities that point to what Jesus brings. Many times we get it wrong about our faith. We are not to simply believe in Jesus and then yawn and do nothing. We're called. Called to know Christ and to make Christ known. And that is not passive behavior. That's discipleship. And discipleship is always active. To hear Jesus. To get up and to follow. To welcome and to seek the healing that he brings. To live the new life. To embrace and acknowledge that eternal life begins now. And not in some faraway place called heaven. To combat racism and just plain hatred of other people. To not run away from those who look or act different. To not fear those who are not like us and to inflict harm upon them. Discipleship. It's not just for the Bible people. It's not just for pastors. For one whose ordination we will celebrate later today. It's not just for those in terms of graduating that we are honoring today. It's for all. All who claim Jesus as Savior and Lord. A few years ago, and you may remember this, I announced to you that I wanted our council to take a good long look at our mission statement. To see if it reflected us in the community known as St. Mark's. And if it didn't, to possibly offer a change. With all that we do, well, strike that. With all that we are called by Jesus to be and to do. To know Christ and to make Christ known reflects faith and ministry from Scripture. And that is exactly the task of a mission statement. Disciples are called to follow, to know Christ, and to make Christ known. Amen.
This time, I would ask to be joined at the chancel by our Chair of Faithful Nation. This time, I would ask if you would please uh, read the names of our graduates that we are honoring today. Yes, we'd like to congratulate our high school graduates this year, the class of 2023, Gabriella Gregory, daughter of Tracy and Andrea Gregory, and granddaughter of Bud and Marge Dobler, and Owen Gare, son of Brenda and Ed Gare. And I would ask those who are present to please come forward with their immediate families. I invite the congregation to please join me. May God, who began this good work in you, carry it through to completion, enabling you to use your talents to the fullest. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, half-truths in superficial relationships, so that we may live deep with your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that we will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that we will reach out your hand to comfort them and change their pain. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. May your integrity be a gift to the world, and may the Spirit of God always be with you. Amen. Congratulations. Would you join me in sharing congratulations?
the Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Christ. Amen. Trusting in God's under mercy, let us offer our prayers for the world in need. We pray for the church. Unite us with any of our times that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restore. God in your mercy. We pray for creation. Ten forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. God, in your mercy. We pray for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected, and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. God in your mercy. We pray for all who are in need. Accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, especially Liz, Grace, Diane, Vanessa, Gary, Charles, Jerry, Patricia, Diana, Richard, Ashton, Lucille, April, Ruth, Gary, Elsie, Virginia, Susan, Bunny, Judy, Ezra, Sheila, Kevin, Kathy, Michael, Steve, Deb, Linda. God of mercy. <coughs> we pray for the eradication of racial and ethnic hatred. On this week, when we commemorate the Immanuel Nine, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy and Christian nationalism that make us believe lies about ourselves and God honors. God of truth and knowledge. Bless those who have finished their courses of study as well as those who have taught and worked beside them, all who supported them along the way. Continue to walk and guide these graduates and grant that they may use all they have learned for the good of all people. God honors. We pray for our Synod and our Synod Assembly meeting this week. Continue to guide us in the way of your truth. God, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for Barnabas and all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
sit at all times and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending king.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment you have, we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world, through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thank you.